In this video, I'm going to be showing you and talking to you about the breeding and spawning behaviors of common goldfish, also sometimes referred to as comets or by several other subspecies or subbreeds. Um, the spawning behaviors are pretty much identical throughout the different goldfish subspecies because they do come from similar or the same carp ancestors. What I'm going to be talking about today is in reference to the breeding behaviors in ponds, although most of this will carry over to aquariums as well. And before your goldfish can even breed, they will need to reach sexual maturity, which will occur after being alive for at least a year, but typically a little bit longer, and they will need to reach somewhere around 3 to 5 inches in length. And this is all under the proper water conditions and the proper nutrition and feeding. And those numbers might vary slightly between different scenarios and different water conditions, but those are your basic requirements for your fish to be able to breed. Now, obviously, the younger fish are going to be more inexperienced. They're going to have lower rates of eggs actually being fertilized and hatching. So after you start to get a little bit older and the fish are more experienced, you will see better breeding results. Now, I'm not going to go over how you can identify a male from a female goldfish. I think there's plenty of great guides online there, but I'm not going to spend the time in this video. Um, but I do want to say when they're approaching spawning time and they're approaching the time where they're going to reproduce, the males will get these little like white pimples on their gill covers and those are called tubercles. And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, but they'll get those on their gill covers and also on their pectoral fins a little bit. And the females will obviously develop a much larger body as they fill with eggs in anticipation of the breeding season. And the breeding season for goldfish and most carp species is going to be springtime. When the temperature is going from cold to warm, you're going to observe your fish begin their mating behavior somewhere between the temperatures of 54 degrees Fahrenheit and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Somewhere in that gap when your average temperatures every day begin to warm up and it hits that little point between those two temperatures, you're going to see your fish start to go into spawning mode, which can be observed by all the behavior you see right here all the males will begin to gang up and chase the female around and what they're doing is they're actually somewhat violently pushing her up against whatever they can to squeeze out her eggs and when she squeezes out her eggs they will then at the same exact time release their sperm to fertilize the eggs in the water and these eggs are very sticky so they're going to adhere to wherever the female lays them so the females will typically make an effort to lay them somewhere near vegetation where they'll be protected from predators and also have a rough surface to adhere to. Now, the fish, when left to their own devices, will often eat many of the eggs, and only some of them out of the hundreds that are laid will actually get to hatch and reach maturity. And some pond owners will actually throw in special spawning ropes or old mops into the water to allow the fish to lay their eggs on that. And then as soon as they spot the eggs, they'll pull that out and put the eggs in a separate container full of clean water that the eggs can hatch in. Because the fish does not care for the, the little hatchlings after they are laid, the babies are left to their own devices to feed and survive. And just a few more little interesting facts about the whole process. The females will often get pretty beat up from this whole ordeal, um, from being pushed up against the sides of the pond or whatever they are kept in. You're going to see this female right here lost a couple of scales and has a little bruise on her head. Some pond owners like to remove their females from the tank so that this doesn't happen and just ignore the whole breeding process and wait till it's all over before they reintroduce them. I like to let nature take its course. I know the females do get beat up a bit, but I've never lost a female to death or anything like that through the breeding process. So I usually just let nature take its course and the females will heal after a few weeks. And the whole process of the breeding usually only lasts a week or two, maybe a month tops. Some things you'll notice too is that even some of the sexually immature males will also participate in the chasing around. And what you'll also notice is that it's kind of interesting. A couple of females will fill up with eggs and typically the females each get their own different days where all the males are chasing them. So for one day or maybe a couple of days all the males will be chasing one particular female and leaving the other one alone. And then after they're done with that one, they'll move on to another one. You don't typically see them going after multiple females on the same day, at least in my own experience with my goldfish. And one last important bit of information that all pond owners should know when their goldfish are breeding, you'll see the water begin to get a bit foamy, and you'll also smell a very fishy smell, similar to the smell that you might 
encounter when one of your fish has died. So don't be too worried about that. You will smell this fishy smell and see foamy water when they are breeding, but this will go away after time. And you can also clear it up a bit with some small water changes. And that's pretty much all the information I have on the breeding and spawning behavior of goldfish. If you want to share some of your own experiences and tips in the comments down below, I'd love to hear them. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome pond videos just like this. And as always, guys, thank you for watching.